Hi, and welcome to the Ask Dr. Angela show with everyone's favorite OBGYN, Dr. Angela Jones. Have you ever been just too embarrassed or shy to ask your own doctor a question about your, you know, private stuff? Well, you have come to the right place to get straight answers. Feel free to ask Dr. Angela anything women's health related. OBGYN, she keeps it real. Pregnancy, she knows what you're expecting. Whole body health, just ask. Dr. Angela has you covered, girl. And now here is Dr. Angela. Happy fall to all of my moms, all of my female followers, all of my gentlemen followers. I'm so excited. It's gorgeous, gorgeous today. It's October. It's fall outside. The leaves are beautiful. They're changing colors, nice reds, oranges, yellows. Although I have to admit, they are not nearly as brilliant or vibrant as I'm accustomed to seeing in the Midwest. But anyway, having said all of that, I would like to officially welcome you to episode 28 of the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. I hope this podcast finds you as elated and energized as I am today. So what's everyone going to be for Halloween? I know I can't be the only one that's dressing up. Come on. Halloween is fun. Who doesn't enjoy Halloween? I'm just super excited that it's actually on a weekend this year. Uh, We've pretty much narrowed our costumes down in my household. I'm thinking about either going with Rick James, you know, the beaded wig, the high red boots, and, you know, I already have a red guitar, and I do know how to play Super Freak, so that'd be kind of hot. The other thing is I was kind of thinking about going with Hugh Hefner. My wife has this fantastic bunny Ha ha, bunny costume, and uh, we're going to a Halloween party. And so we thought that I could be maybe Hugh with the smoker's jacket, the cigar. Only thing is, is that I just dyed my hair. You know, since I'm growing it out, I'm getting rid of the grays. I just don't like long gray hair. It makes me, who typically looks very youthful, look a lot older. So anyway, let's talk about uh, vaccinations during pregnancy, and specifically since it's October, it's flu season. Oh my gosh. Who's gotten their flu shot or who hasn't gotten their flu shot? I happened to get my flu shot today. I was rounding on postpartum, and one of the nurses was like, Dr. Angela, have you gotten your flu shot? And I said, mm, no, and mm, really not sure if I'm going to get it. But, you know, I'm telling my, my pregnant patients specifically all the time to get it. And so I just said, you know what? You should get it. You're in healthcare. You work in the hospital. You are in contact with people all the time, get the flu shot. So I did suck it up and I got it and my right arm is killing me. It's killing me. But you know what? You do what you have to do. So hopefully I won't get really sick with the flu this year. So one of the things that I'm commonly asked by my pregnant moms is, Dr. Angela, should we get the flu shot? And the answer to that is a resounding, I'm going to say that again, a resounding yes. Y to the E to the S. You absolutely should get the flu shot. With regards to when to get it, you can get it anytime. We used to have this thing where we were like, oh, wait until you're outside the first trimester. That no longer is the case. ACOG, which is the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, absolutely recommends that you get the flu shot no matter where you are in your pregnancy. It doesn't matter what your gestational age is. Get the flu shot. Flu season is from October all the way through May. And what I will say to my pregnant moms is that pregnancy in and of itself puts you in an immunocompromised or makes you somewhat immunosuppressed. So if you get the flu when you're pregnant, it is a real ass kicker, for lack of a better phrase. Flu affects pregnant moms so much worse It's so much harsher in pregnancy than in other individuals that don't happen to be pregnant and hence are not immunosuppressed or compromised. The other really important reason to get the flu shot during pregnancy is that it does provide some passive immunization for baby. Uh, Babies are not even eligible to get the flu shot until they're at least, I want to say, six months of age. So getting the flu shot is also beneficial to the unborn baby. Just a word to the wise, to all my moms out there that are contemplating getting the flu shot, specifically my pregnant moms. For my pregnant moms, you want to make sure that you get the in 
inactivated flu vaccine. So make sure that the flu vaccine that you get is inactivated. And the one that you, where you get the shot, the intramuscular inject injection, typically is inactivated. The nasal spray is a live vaccine, and you should not, I repeat, you should not get that particular vaccine. So nasal spray, a no-go. Intramuscular injection, which is the inactivated vaccine, is a go. The other vaccination that I am consistently asked about is the Tdap vaccine. You know, that stands for tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Pertussis, also known as the whooping cough. My pregnant moms are often, oftentimes asking me, oh my gosh, Dr. Angela, when should we get this? Should we get it? The answer to that is, number one, yes, you should get it. And number two, the timing of when you should get this Optimally, it really should be between 27 and 36 weeks of gestation. I'm going to say that again. Optimally, you should get the Tdap vaccine for all my pregnant moms between 27 and 36 weeks of gestation. I know at the hospital that I work at, a lot of the moms get it, you know, during their postpartum period before they go home. But again, optimally, you want to get it between 27 and 36 weeks because this way you are actually able to increase passive antibody transfer to baby and provide some passive immunization to the newborn baby because babies are not even eligible to initiate their whooping cough or more formally known as the pertussis vaccination until they're two months of age. Having said that, it's also really important to note that most of the morbidity and mortality that's associated with whooping cough occurs in infants that are less than three months of age. So that's another reason why I typically recommend that my pregnant moms try to get their whooping cough or their Tdap vaccination between that 27 and 36 week range. Anybody that's going to have close contact with the newborn baby, and I'm specifically speaking of grandparents, caregivers, or anyone who's going to have close contact with the newborn baby, all of these folks should also have the Tdap vaccination. So there we have it, good people. That's my blurb on vaccinations during pregnancy. I hope that you've gotten something out of this particular podcast. Certainly, I appreciate your continued support. You know, I'm just having a blast doing this. So for those of you who would like to have one of your questions featured on the Ask Dr. Angel podcast, please, please, please Submit at www.askdrangela.com. That's A-S-K-D-R-A-N-G-E-L-A.com. I actually do a ton of blog posting, and you can certainly read about vaccinations and pregnancy amongst a ton of other interesting topics, funny topics, informative topics that I've addressed at the Say What blog post. It's like, say what? blog post on, on the Ask Dr. Angela uh, website, which again is www.askdrangela.com. Just click on the Say What blog and you will be connected to and have access to an array of topics dealing with both pregnancy and gynecology. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this thought. And in the end, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. That comes to us from Abraham Lincoln. Until next time, look better, feel better, be better. Can't wait to reconnect on episode 29. Thank you for listening to the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. For more information on women's health and the show notes for this episode, please visit Dr. Angela at www.askdrangela.com. While you're there, don't forget to leave your own message for Dr. Angela. See you soon. All of the information provided and discussed in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and should not take the place of consulting a physician. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases or illnesses and does not and should not replace treatment for a medical professional. Listening to and participating in this podcast does not create a doctor-patient relationship between you and Dr. Angela Jones. If you need medical advice or assistance, you should consult a physician. Listening to and participating in this podcast is subject to the terms and conditions posted at drangela.com forward slash terms.